Hello Summoners and welcome back to another Pro Guides patch rundown. My name is Christoph and today I'll be going over all the changes that were made in patch 9.8. I'll cover all the details including a tier list for each role that was made by our in-house analysts and partnered pro players. There are a lot of changes made this patch which raised a ton of questions. Are tank junglers coming back? Is Zed being gutted? Is Kale still an insane carry? Don't worry, we got you covered and we'll answer all these questions in this video. But remember, since the patch just hit the live server, please do keep in mind that these tier lists are purely predictions. We encourage all of you guys to comment below and say if you agree or disagree with specific champion placements. Also, as a reminder, there'll be an updated tier list video next week where we use fresh statistics to give you guys the most accurate tier lists available. So if you want to watch that video, make sure to click subscribe and hit the bell. This is a big patch and there's a lot to cover, so let's get right into it. Let's start with the top lane. Camille used to be one of the most oppressive junglers in the game, which led to several nerfs to her kit. Even though the Steel Shadow was very dominant in the jungle, a lot of these nerfs indirectly affected her role as a top laner and caused her to disappear from the meta entirely. In order to put Camille back into a decent spot, the nerf to her base attack speed will be reverted this patch. Camille will remain in our A tier for top lane this patch due to buffs being very small and almost negligible. Fiora has been doing decently well in the top lane and will now be even better due to buffs she'll receive this patch. Her W will now have its slow stun duration increased followed by a sizable damage buff during all stages of the game. Next, her E will have its mana cost reduced to allow her spam the ability more often. Although these buffs are great, our analysts predict that Fiora will remain as an A tier pickup and will also be a solid pick for the upcoming patch. Nara has been getting a ton of buffs recently, but still isn't the lane bully that he used to be. It's been very hard for him to keep up with the high damage and mobility of his counterparts, such as Riven and Fiora, which is causing him to struggle in the meta. Nara will be receiving a huge buff this patch to his ultimate cooldown, which will now be a 30 second cooldown at max rank. Although these buffs are great, we do predict that he'll still only be a B or borderline A tier pick at best. We'll keep a close eye on him and keep you updated in our mid-patch analysis video next week, so look out for that. For a champion who's supposed to have a weak early game and an insanely powerful late game, Kale right now is just too strong early. In order to put Kale in check, she'll be receiving several nerfs this patch. Her base AD, armor, and attack speed ratio will all be decreased, followed by a nerf to her passive, which will now exclude bonus skill points from her level 16 power spike. This means that those elixir of skills you pick up from Kleptomancy will no longer speed up her god mode power spike. Despite these nerfs, Kale will remain in our S tier for top lane and will still hold a solid stance in the meta. Orn used to be a very dominant top laner, but has still been struggling to see play ever since his rework. Although he's been picked up a few times in competitive play, he's still only borderline a B tier pick for solo queue due to the removal of his shield. In order to help Orn be more useful in the top lane, he will receive buffs to his unique item upgrades that he provides. Fortfire Cape, Frozen Fist, and Infernal Mask will all see buffs this patch, and Orn will be moved up to our B tier for patch 9.8. Renekton has had a solid stance in the meta, but will become even stronger due to the few buffs he will receive this patch. His base health, attack speed, and armor growth will all be buffed, followed by an increase in healing on his Q. These changes will make Renekton a powerhouse in the top lane, and we highly recommend you pick him up sometime soon. Renekton will remain in our A tier top lane for now, but we'll see if he can make the push to S tier next week. Next up is Singed. Due to the recent nerfs on Dark Seal, Singed has not been doing so well in the top lane. In order to help him out a bit, he'll be receiving a few compensation buffs this patch. Firstly, his base health regen will be increased by a decent amount, followed by a buff to his W slow. His E will also have its mana cost reduced to allow Singed to trade more efficiently in lane. Singed will remain in our top lane B tier for now, but has high potential to make it back into our A tier. The top lane tier list only sees a few changes compared to the one we had in our previous patch. Although there were a ton of balance changes made to top laners, our in-house analysts predict that they won't affect the meta too much and you can enjoy playing your comfort picks from last patch. Starting from the S tier, we have Kale, Riven, Jax, Urgot, Hecarim, and Vladimir. For patch 9.8, our analysts recommend you pick up Kale in the top lane due to her ability to 1v9 a game at level 16. Kale received some heavy nerfs from multiple patches, but it appears that she isn't going anywhere. 
Her win rate is still insanely high in the top lane, and she'll remain as a powerhouse pick moving forward. We'll be releasing a detailed guide on Kale soon in our new series, Pro Guide's Pick of the Patch, so make sure you subscribe if you want to see that in the next coming days. All right, let's get on to the jungle. For all you jungle mains out there, make sure to check out ProGuides.com where we offer a great course with Night Blue if you guys want to increase your rank as junglers this season. Go take a look, I promise you won't regret it. Amumu mains, it's time to wipe those tears because the sad mummy will now be broken in the jungle. Just kidding. The sad boy has been sitting at the bottom of our tier list for far too long, but the balance team has finally decided to give him some love. His passive, Curse Touch, will now have its pre-mitigation damage increased by 3%, followed by a cooldown buff to his Q, Bandage Toss. All of these buffs aren't enough to move Amumu to a higher tier, our analysts do expect that he'll have a significantly higher pick rate than before. He is naturally quite strong in lower elos, his team fighting presence is very good, and he has a lot of CC. However, Amumu will remain in our jungle C tier because he's still unable to keep up with the carry jungle meta. Shadow Assassin Kane has always been overshadowed by his counterpart, Rost. In fact, picking Blue Kane in ranked has sometimes been considered to be trolling by a lot of players due to just how weak it is. In order to bring some diversity in Kane's transformations, Blue Kane's E, Shadow Step, will have its cooldown reduced to 8 seconds at all ranks. Kane will be moved up to our S tier this patch, and you're probably wondering how Kane can move up to our S tier when there was only a small change made to his E cooldown. Well, it turns out that the Cinder Hulk buffs weren't implemented into the Rift last patch, but they will be hitting the live servers in patch 9.8. With tank junglers coming back into the meta, Red Kane will be an extremely good pick due to his percent damage and sustain. Try him out in your next few games and let us know how that goes down below. Master Yi has been a favorite by many players in low elo, but rarely sees play in higher ones. Although he's an S tier pick for gold and below, the Wuju Bladesman is only a borderline A tier at best in platinum and above. In patch 9.8, Master Yi will be receiving a small buff to his ultimate, which now allows him to move through units while his ultimate is active. Master Yi will be moved up to our A tier for patch 9.8. Sejuani has been on the brink of making the push to S tier, and she'll likely make that push this patch. Her W, Winner's Wrath, will have its percent damage increased by a significant amount, which will increase her dueling, camp clear speed, and ganking potential. Sejuani will be moved up to our S tier for patch 9.8. Although Trundle has been getting buffed numerous amounts of times in the previous patches, none of them were big enough to push Trundle to A tier in the jungle. In order to bring him closer to his prime, Trundle will now have his chomp bonus damage increased by a small amount, followed by a slow increase on his E, Pillar of Ice. Trundle will remain in our B tier for the jungle this patch, but he might make the push to A tier if champions like Sejuani, Zac, and Gragas start seeing more play. Cinderhulk was supposed to be buffed in patch 9.7, but it seems that the coding team forgot to implement it into the game. Cinderhulk will be buffed to its intended amount in patch 9.8, and we'll see drastic changes in the meta. The jungler tier list has pretty much been reverted to our previous one at the start of patch 9.7. It turns out that our analysts weren't wrong about the tank junglers coming back, and it was actually a mistake on Riot's end where they forgot to implement the Cinderhulk changes. In our S tier, we have Rek'Sai, Jarvan, Nunu, Sejuani, Kha'Zix, and Kane. These six champions are a notch above the rest and will give you the competitive edge you need to beat your opponents in ranked. Some notable A tier picks for this patch are Kindred, Hecarim, and Karthus, who are on the brink of making the push to S tier. Kindred will be extremely good this patch if tank junglers do return, due to her percent damage with Blade of the Ruin King combined with her E, Mounting Dread. For patch 9.8, our analysts recommend you pick up Sejuani in the jungle. The buffs made to her kit this patch combined with the buffs to Cinder Hulk should make her an S-tier jungler once again. As we mentioned before, we will have a detailed guide on our picks of the patch featuring Sejuani jungle, so make sure to subscribe if you want to see that in the next coming days. Alright, on to the mid lane. At the start of the season, Cassiopeia was tearing up solo queue with her oppressive playstyle in the top, mid, and bottom lane. Due to how oppressive she was, Cass received a ton of nerfs, which stacked up and eventually made her a tad too weak. In order to compensate for the major nerfs, she'll be getting a mana cost buff to her E, Twin Fangs. Cassiopeia will remain in our mid lane A tier for patch 9.8. Zed received some major buffs a few patches ago, but it turns out that he's just a bit too strong right now. 
He has one of the highest ban rates in the game and is a very good pickup in the mid lane. To put Zed in check, his Q, Razor Shuriken, will have its damage reduced by 10 at all ranks, followed by a cooldown nerf to his W, Living Shadow. Zed will be dropped to our A tier for patch 9.8, but will still be a great pickup for this meta. The mid lane tier list for patch 9.8 sees a ton of changes compared to our previous one. In our S tier, we welcome two new members, Zoe and Morgana. Morgana is currently dominating solo queue with her GLP and Glacial Augment style, and many high elo players have been finding lots of success with her. She's actually considered to be one of the most broken mid laners in the current meta by many challenger players, so make sure you give her a try. Ryze has been moved up to our A tier for the mid lane due to his play rate and win rate increasing by a decent amount recently. For patch 9.8, our analysts recommend you pick up GLP Ari mid. The slows from GLP combined with Glacial Augment make it really easy for you to all in opponents without allowing them to react. We'll include Ari in our pick of the patch video coming soon, so stay tuned. On to ADC. Ever since the Stormraiser rework, Jin dropped from S tier status down to a borderline AB tier champion. A few patches ago, Jin received a compensation buff on his Q's damage ratio, but it seems that these buffs weren't enough to keep him at a competitive level. In patch 9.8, his E captive audience will have its duration increased by one minute, followed by a buff to its recharge timer in later stages of the game. Lastly, his R curtain call will have its damage multiplier increased by a small amount. Jin will remain in our A tier for ADC and will have a decent stance in the meta. Blade of the Rune King has been a bit too strong on champions like Misfortune, Vayne, and Kale recently, so it'll have its gold cost increased by 100. This means that you'll need to stay for an extra wave before you base to your power spike, but it shouldn't be too big of a nerf. Right now, the only champion who's building Stormraiser is Kai'Sa. In order to bring more diversity into AD builds, Stormraiser will have its slow and energized effect buffed this patch. There was only one major balance change for ADCs in patch 9.8, so our tier list will remain very similar to the previous one. In S plus tier, we have Vayne, who's been sitting all by herself at the top for multiple patches now. In our S tier, we have Sivir, Kaisa, Lucian, Jinx, and a new member, Caitlyn. Misfortune has been dropped from our S tier due to the nerfs on Blade of the Ruin King, but she should still be a borderline S tier pick. We'll talk about our pick of the patch for the bot lane later on in this video, so make sure you watch till the very end. Here's a small hint, it was recently picked by TSM in the NA LCS Finals. On to support! Nautilus received some big buffs a few patches ago, and he's been doing pretty well in the meta. However, these buffs were not enough to see play in competitive matches, so he'll be getting even more buffs this patch. His passive Staggering Blow will have its root duration increased by a small amount, followed by a buff to his Q, Dredge Line's damage. Nautilus will be moved up to our A tier for supports this patch. Our support tier list sees a few changes for patch 9.8, in our S tier, we welcome a new member, Sona. It seems that her play rate is finally high enough for her to make the push to S tier, and she's a very strong pick this patch. Next up, we welcome Nautilus into our A tier due to the recent buffs he received, and he'll be a great pickup for support mains. It seems like shielding and healing supports are still at the top with the exception of Lulu, who seems to be struggling in the meta. For patch 9.8, our analysts recommend you pick up a duo partner and try out the brand new OP Tarek plus Sona combo in the bot lane. TSM has recently played this combo in the NALCS finals, and it was so OP that Tarek started getting perma banned in that series. Alright, let's get on to items. Due to Bilgewater Cutlass getting a price increase by 100, Hextech Gunblade will also have a compensation buff by reducing its cost by 100. The total remains unchanged and will have a net zero impact on the item. Bramble Vest and Thorn Mail will have their Grievous Wounds duration increased by 3 seconds per proc due to just how much healing there is for AD carries right now. All the lifesteal from Wit's End, Blade of the Ruined King, and Bloodline make it hard to do a significant amount of damage to AD carries over time, but the buffs to Thorn Mail should help a lot. Coup de Grasse is the most common rune used at the bottom of the precision tree. In order to bring some more diversity, it will have its adaptive force and bonus gold removed. However, it will receive a 1% increase to its bonus damage as a compensation buff. The Howling Abyss is returning to League of Legends. Make sure you check out the official patch notes for more details on ARAM changes. 
Galaxy Slayer Z, KDA Evelyn Prestige Edition, and the brand new Invictus Gaming skins will all be released this patch, so make sure you save up your RP. These skins look awesome. That's it for our patch analysis video for 9.8. We will have a pick of the patch video coming out on Friday, which will include Kale, Sejuani, Ari, Tarek, and Sona, so stay alert for that. If you enjoyed watching this video, then please leave a like, comment, and subscribe to our channel to be notified for our next video. If you guys are interested in getting a higher rank this season, then please check out ProGuides.com where we have guides with your favorite pro players and challenge your coaches you can talk to 24-7. Thank you guys so much for watching, good luck in your next games, and we'll see you on the Rift.